Right now, terrorists are trying to cut us off from what we need to survive. Power, water, food, and our ability to communicate. But there are researchers right here in the Miami Valley trying to beat them at their own game. Only on two, Pam Elliott investigates who is keeping you safe from the dark forces who are attacking our power grids. These are the terrorist attacks we see. The hallmarks of plots hatched on planes by bombers who blow up buildings and people, all in the name of bin Laden. And the terrorist's next conquest might be all that stands between you and a major blackout. Remember the windstorm of 2008? Take that catastrophe and spread it across the entire country. Imagine if the lights went out for 304 million people for 10 days. And what we're going to do is we're going to introduce some additional traffic, meaning while the two things are talking, I'm going to get in the middle. That's right Pat engineer Juan Lopez Jr. is a cyberspace research engineer. He's fighting terrorists. With this model, Lopez showed me how easy it is to disrupt the power grid. Lopez said someone on the outside can make the generator appear to be on when it's really off. It's called the man in the middle. The black lines coming up on the screen are additional traffic that adds to the conversation between the control operator and the device he's controlling. See what they're doing. Lopez said he's using this model to learn how to attack the grid, attacks that will teach him how to protect it. Computers need to talk to pass information back and forth within the grid and outside the grid. When you do that, you inherently carry over the vulnerabilities that come with computer technology. Are you all using the same tools or are you using different tools? For the most part, as he attacks, I, I'm running tools to monitor what's coming in so that I can right. try to go through the gibberish and figure out where the bad guys are at. That's, General Walter that's Gavan is the man in charge here. He just recently returned from Afghanistan. He said what's going on in this cyberspace research lab isn't much different than what's happening on the battlefield. Except in cyberspace, there's a hidden danger. Because it's a dawning domain. So much is possible. So many people play in it. But we're one of the ones that are playing in it, and we're the strongest player here right now. Dr. Richard Raines is the director of the Center for Cyberspace Research at Wright Pat. Like Gavan and Lopez, he's trying to stay one step ahead of the terrorists. What you don't know is really scary in this environment because how fast it's changing over time. What's changing is technology. The grid in its current configuration is a vast network of hard wires that snake across the country. However, it's reaching the end of its life cycle. It's less expensive to use wireless technology to connect everyone on the grid, but in doing so, there is a greater risk. The good news, according to Dr. Raines, is that there's no one single vulnerability. No hole in the system can take the entire system down. But it isn't foolproof. Flashback to August 2003. More than 100 power plants shut down and millions of people lost power when, according to a task force's final report, a problem in Ohio sent a ripple effect through the Northeast. Terrorists did not cause that blackout. But the alarming incident prompted the military and private utilities to work together to better protect the grid. So while the cyber threat is continuing to increase, we've got people who are working uh, day in and day out to strengthen our, our defenses, uh, to, to take and push off these types of threats. The reality is this. Foreign governments have already encountered attacks to their power grids. They've been able to break them up. Protecting our vast grid will cost billions of dollars. But keep in mind, an attack on the grid could lead to days without power, food, water, transportation, and spotty, if any, communication. And to fix it could take weeks, even months. Pam Elliott, 2 News, on your side.